Well, 4-0 it is. England lost the fourth test here by the crushing margin of eight wickets and a, a totally dispiriting, demoralising defeat it was too. The spectre of a 5-0 whitewash now hang, hangs over this England team like a dark shadow. My name is John Etheridge. Welcome to the wrap-up of day four of the fourth test and day four was also the final day. Australia won this match with total confidence and authority in the end and it's amazing to think that shortly after lunch on day three England were 116 runs ahead with all 10 wickets standing and in a position of real command but within just a day after, a day and uh, a few hours after that they lost the match and really the way and the manner of their defeat was utterly dispiriting and you have to say that all the evidence points to Australia winning again in Sydney. How on, how on earth can England turn this round from now? Alistair Cook, the captain, has just done a press conference and he insists he won't be resigning. He wants to carry on in this job in the long term. He wants to be the man to try and rebuild this England team and put it back into shape. But uh, I think one or two others in this team could be approaching the end of their test careers. Certainly you'd have to say that the likes of Johnny Bairstow, maybe Michael Carberry, Tim Bresnan, Monty Panesar have been proved in this match either to be never going to be good enough for test cricket or perhaps no longer good enough because really the performance of some players in this game and not just those guys but some senior players as well has been utterly appalling and, and really it's been quite demoralising to watch. Uh, I, I was witness to all the big defeats of the 1990s when England, when England were routinely thrashed by the great Australian team of the era and this ranks right up, up, up there alongside it and, and really you'd have to say in many ways it's worse because this is not a great Australian team. There's three or four players who have been outstanding. Mitch Johnson, of course, man of the match here for the third test out of four. Brad Hadding, the wicketkeeper, uh, David Warner and Michael Clark. But beyond that, really, the guys have not had a great series. Uh, uh, there's been contributions from the likes of Steve Smith and Shane Watson along the way. But really, it is an Australian team with some vulnerability. But um, England have not been at any stage, really, but been able to put them under sustained pressure. So. Day four began, Australia with 30 for naught, needing another 201 runs to reach their victory target of 231. And really, apart from a couple of um, scares in the first half an hour, they never looked like not failing, uh, not, not um, going to get to, to, those, um, to that target. Um, David Warner was, was, was dropped early on, and, uh, a really a straightforward uh, drop by uh, Alistair Cook at first slip. Thankfully, uh, it wasn't um, that costly because Warner was out shortly after slashing at a short ball from Ben Stokes. Chris Rogers, who scored a century in uh, Australia's run trace to follow up his half century in the first innings, he was also dropped. Well, sort of not really dropped. I mean, he edged and the ball flew between Bairstow and uh, Cook at first. Step. Cook eventually, at the last minute, extended his right hand and it did touch his, his hand as it went through. But uh, really, it was Johnny Bairstow's catch. Bairstow in this match not really looked like a test class wicketkeeper and uh, he should have gone for the ball but uh, decided to leave it and really it was Bairstow's catch. So a few early opportunities but really once um, Rodgers and Watson got going the result was never in doubt and uh, you know England looked pretty powerless though the bowling lacked penetration the captaincy was a little bit strange at times I mean in the first 90 minutes of play Stuart Broad who's been easily England's best bowler in the series and Monty Panesar the first choice spinner bowled two overs between them it was extraordinary really uh, because England needed early wickets and uh, surely Broad was the man most likely to get them but he bowled a couple of overs then was whipped out of the attack Joe Root actually had two spells this is Joe Root the, the part-time spinner had two spells before Panesar was even called into the attack and of course by then it was too late and the, the Aussies were able to attack uh, Panesar with, with, with great freedom so the tactics of Alistair Cook were probably flawed as well. The bowling lacked penetration and the body language was completely submissive really. They looked like a broken, beaten team and you have to say that uh, over the last you know, two days of this match, the first of all they're batting and then they're bowling and fielding. They've, they've looked like a village teaming and really looked a very poor side indeed. Totally dispirited. And Captain Cook, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a fine young man, Alistair Cook, and everybody who knows him or meets him says he's a good bloke, but really he seems at the moment completely unable to inspire his troops to lift them and they really just looked a bit of a rabble at times and wandering around with this uh, air of defeat in their, in their body language so it was pretty sad to see so 
I'm afraid the news for all Pommy supporters from Melbourne is not encouraging. England have lost the fourth test by eight wickets. They're now 4-0 down in the series and only something of an, of an amazing turnaround really in the final test in Sydney which begins on January the 3rd can somehow avoid the whitewash. But it's 4-0 to England. So, I wish it was 4-0 to England. It's 4-0 to Australia with one to play and that's the um, wrap-up from the MCG. Cheers for now.